Hey everyone, and uh, thanks for checking out my uh, channel. Um, uh, doing the weekly review uh, tonight, I didn't get a chance to do it uh, yesterday, and uh, it's probably actually more interesting to have a look at this um, today, as we had many events that I know in the past we can actually um, remove the speculation, the high volatility, and focus on the on the longer term uh, trend on a couple of markets. I'm going to start on the Euro USD. Uh, paid uh, on the forex that I'm, I've been trading short now, uh, accumulating, um, trading the reversal for large moves down uh, to come. Uh, there's still no changes here uh, in terms of the, the price action and uh, and what happened over the past few days. Uh, so zooming in here, uh, something very key that happened. So we're still inside that large uh, channel, uh, but we also having that divergence that did actually. Uh, got some major uh, breakdown in terms of the momentum at that point uh, from here. Uh, this is clearly to me a sign that we are actually uh, definitely going down uh, in the coming days, potentially weeks, but I think it might actually accelerate should we break that limit. Uh, I put that line here because that's the ext extension um, when we go down. I think that's the uh, daily chart so we'll go down to the four hours can drop back to the lower but still recover somehow uh, now we are adding pressure at that point here uh, that I believe we should actually break um, very soon uh, we're looking at the first of September for resolution should we not break higher uh, I believe following Powell's speech today there's no no more fuel for this to actually keep going up the euro will likely go down I think the BCE um, speech is somewhere statement is next uh, week I believe correct so I believe the pressure will return on the euro from here and that will have some major consequences on the on many commodities that's been driven by that major uh, rally that I believe has been just mainly speculation uh, about the end of the dollar and all these things which is uh, in my opinion largely uh, exaggerated uh, so moving to the USD commodities and the one uh, I think are the more important at the moment so we having gold that is actually inside a very large uh, descending uh, triangle which is a very reliable figure for a breakdown uh, we had some surprising uh, move on I think it was on yesterday that's the, that's the one hour uh, I'm moving to the four hour here on the four hour chart and it was on yesterday a very big uh, move here with a large uh, green candle uh, I got caught a little bit on this um, I did exit my short position uh, on the gold miners here I think it was at uh, just barely about 19.30 uh, I wasn't expecting this, I was actually waiting for a breakdown uh, that triangle here, I was compressing nicely to the to the lower end and that trend line at the bottom and we got some really nice reaction on the buy side but uh, of course it did actually came back up and stopped right on the RSI divergence that was a nice other short entry point uh, on gold also a little bit risky since we had the power speech today and you never really know what could happen on these days but uh, still uh, we had that very large uh, candle to the upside strong re rejection I believe that trend line will be solid and remain solid until we actually get at least to 1900 nine, it's 1890 uh, then we might start consolidating a little bit here but there's a risk I believe that we are going to break lower since that trend line will probably have to give uh, and then we'll go down probably to the 1800 where we'll be still looking for buy entry I had originally 1900 in mind but I believe now since the gold dropped and all the uh, USD commodities did drop or at least stop the uh, uptrend uh, we're gonna but the USD didn't actually strengthen so much so I believe if it starts moving lower we will add some uh, big selling pressure onto the precious metals uh, and all uh, USD commodities so I'm staying uh, with that plan I believe that's gonna be uh, rewarding in the coming days or weeks before we can actually start accumulating long again uh, because at some point we will find some uh, good support uh, to build up some new long position for the next move up as I believe that uh, rally on the precious metals is not over but we just need to shake some uh, long positions uh, and clear up a little bit the, the, um, the book summer so yeah looking at silver as well at the same time uh, very similar uh, situation uh, with some difference that we having uh, the trend line running uh, not the trend line is actually running 
uh, slightly the same. We have actually a double trend line on this. Uh, if we actually look on the four hours, we have that one here that is actually starting from the start of the move up since uh, 19.6. But on the daily, we are also having some intermediate, uh, intermediate uh, trend line here that is also holding the price quite nicely uh, in terms of the closure. So be looking at silver to break lower than uh, 26 uh, on the daily. Uh, that will give the signal for a larger move to the downside. Uh, until then, I'm probably not going to play this too much as that trend line is uh, definitely strong, but we're also having some strong support underneath. So we seek resolution for this by the 1st of September when we're going to get some significant move. As we can see, Bollinger Bands are uh, reducing. We drop now to uh, roughly $2 which is significantly tight. I think that we had roughly the same before the large move up, 19 to 20, uh, a little bit tighter, but still, it will probably compress a little bit more as we approach here, and I'm expecting a breakdown. Uh, but having uh, said that, should it actually break uh, out, I would probably uh, be a buyer in that area. Should we get a nice close um, above 27? But uh, with that divergence here originating uh, at that point, 22, I believe the odds are more uh, on the downside, and if the US dollar is actually strengthening, that will actually put definitely much pressure uh, onto silver as well. Looking at uh, crude oil, um, we had some big uh, move down today, um, but uh, I'm still out of that market for now. Uh, I'll be waiting for a clear signal uh, on that trend line. I believe that one is actually uh, more reliable than the previous ones. That got actually broken a couple of times but here we're having something a little bit more solid with many touches and going from the bottom the target should we actually break here still the origin of the rising wedge uh, from here I believe we'll take a bit more time uh, target and change is probably about 35 for the end move but what I like to see uh, as we are on the four hours uh, here uh, yeah on the four hours we're having that divergence that's still pointing to this um, to actually 32, the origin. Uh, I would like a, a last spike, something moving much higher, uh, somewhere at 44. I believe we have the weekly 50 MA running not too far. Uh, that would be uh, a very uh, nice entry point. Uh, yeah, so roughly 44, just about 44, nice rejection. Uh, and then some figure, uh, of course, not on the weekly. Yes too long but something a bit nicer than this um, on the daily well actually that figure is not so bad so it could be the one uh, could be an evening uh, star so I'll keep an eye on this and see how we close today should we actually close somewhere here and make that figure and continue tomorrow and move down we have a high chance to break down so that could be interesting uh, so I'll keep an eye on this uh, definitely uh, on uh, oil for finally a very uh, <laughs> long weighted uh, breakdown uh, that would be rewarding for a while because uh, yeah, I was not really successful trading this, uh, not even on the upside, so yeah, hopefully it will be rewarding that time. So it's a significant move, we can get from 42 down to 35, that's a, that's a, that's a nice move that will actually pay off for all the, uh, the, the frustrating uh, small trades uh, I, may, I may add in that, in that range since we reached 40. Uh, looking now at natural gas, uh, very interesting configuration as well. Um, I believe we are really near the top uh, on this uh, swing, so we're still inside that large uh, channel, but as we can see, uh, the four hours uh, divergence is in pla place and well in place, uh, usually highly reliable. Uh, we got the first touch on the divergence was at 2.38, uh, we usually get about 10% up following the first touch when we're having a powerful move uh, to the upside. So roughly, we're talking about 260 was the target, but we now extended this a bit higher, I believe, because of the storm uh, story we had over the uh, past few days. Uh, but uh, clearly, uh, this is a market that will need to cool off uh, ahead of winter, and there's no reason for this to continue much higher. We're still having a 277, the gap from last winter that could actually get filled in. Uh, that would be a really perfect entry point. I think 
is a bit, so it will be a bit tight for the RSI to allow for this, uh, reaching uh, 80 and still making it uh, under the divergence trend line, but this is possible. So um, keep an eye on this, uh, I'm going to accumulate short position in that area between 270 and potentially 280. Uh, the target for that move uh, will be to clear the divergence. Uh, so 190 is probably the end target, but we're gonna get, of course, 215 uh, that will be in a way, could be a potential exit, uh, but aggressively, uh, wouldn't take long entry before we actually reach that trend line and get some buy signal to trade the winter, uh, winter spike that we are likely to get, but we are just too early for this. Uh, we need to wait at least September, and entry would be early October, in my opinion. And finally, looking at uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, as expected, um, did break uh, that trend line. Uh, we had this, I think that's the four hours as well. Uh, so I was just putting a couple of lines here, uh, but yes, the, so no, it's a bit useless, rid of this. So we had that trend line that did all, all the attempts to break down. We got that false breakout, so was expecting a uh, retracement down, and then we broke the trend line. I believe it was earlier uh, this week, and since then, uh, no uh, coming back. It wasn't a false uh, breakdown, but a proper one. Uh, we got a no, uh, nice uh, bear flag in place, so we extend from the top. The first target, as we broke down, uh, would be slightly below uh, 11k, but I believe this is probably a bit too early uh, to open uh, long. At 11k, I will wait for the dollars and see what what will happen then. Um, we having the origin of the divergence here, so we're pointing at um, 11k. That could be entry point, but I'll be a bit careful. I believe we're having one uh, nice uh, trend line that could bring some support a little bit lower. That would be my ideal uh, entry. Uh, potentially, should we get some buy signal uh, 11k or slightly below, I could start accumulating from here and moving down uh, to 10, uh, 10k, but ideally uh, 10, 10.5 would be a uh, better entry point with the right signal as we will have some selling pressure on Bitcoin very likely in the coming days uh, and, and potentially weeks. So yeah, that's about it for tonight. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, please share. Uh, even if it's not, uh, if it's different, if you think I got it wrong, I'm happy to read what you're putting uh, and uh, and see if there's no nothing I can actually change in my analysis. And sometimes from your comments, I can actually uh, reflect on what I'm doing and, uh, and sometimes not necessarily change the plan, but at least adjust it and or consider the risk in a different view, um, which is definitely benefiting, I believe, for me, of course, and for potentially for you as well. So thanks for watching, and I speak to you soon. Bye.